Have you ever seen the anti-gravity beaker before? At least I call it the anti-gravity beaker. Sometimes we call it the rising waters. It's a super easy demonstration of gas properties. You can do it at home. You just need a shallow pan, a candle, and a jar or a beaker. We want to light the candle and let it get going for a minute. We want it to start generating a bit of heat. Then you just need a bottle. I'm using an Erlenmeyer flask, but it can be any kind of glass container. We need to invert that container over the candle and then watch what happens. The water flows uphill against gravity into the container. Okay, but the question is why? I'm going to back it up here and let's think about what's happening and see if we can explain why the water travels uphill. Well, we know that the paraffin wax of the candle is doing a combustion reaction. Um, and we can represent the combustion reaction with the equation here. And it's consuming oxygen. Uh, it's consuming 47 moles of oxygen for every mole of paraffin that's burnt. That's a lot. Um, so maybe the oxygen being consumed is the reason why there's a vacuum created and that pulls the water up into the flask. And this is actually a common explanation uh, that people start out with. But it's totally wrong. And the reason why it's wrong, if we look at the equation more closely, yes, there are 47 moles of oxygen being consumed, but there are 31 moles of carbon dioxide gas being produced and another 32 moles of water vapor being produced. The water is a vapor because this is a combustion reaction. Well, if we add those together, that's 63 moles of gaseous products. So we are consuming 47 units, 47 moles of oxygen gas, but we're making more gas than we produce. So if this were the case, if we were having the water rise because the oxygen is being consumed, it should actually be having the opposite effect. Okay, so if that's not it, then what could it be? Well, to give you a hint, I wanna back it up to the very moment that the lip of the Erlenmeyer flask makes contact with the water and watch what happens on the left side here. See those bubbles of gas escaping? Well, that's a sign that this is a function of heat. As the candle is burning, of course, it's very hot. This is a highly exothermic reaction. So it's giving off lots of energy. The gas molecules being produced and the air around it are heated by this energy as it's given off from the candle. So there's all this hot air rising up above the candle in this convection current. Well, as soon as we put the beaker over the top, that air starts to become trapped. You can see it escaping right here. Now, at this moment, the water creates a seal at the bottom of the flask. That means that no new oxygen can enter. And as the combustion reaction consumes the oxygen, it means that the rate of the reaction is going to start to go down. So the hottest that the gases in the Erlenmeyer flask are is that first moment, right after the seal is created. From this point on, the gases inside the Erlenmeyer are going to start to cool as the flame goes out. This is the key to understanding why the water rises. Let's picture the molecules. At this moment in time, there are a small number of hot, energetic gas molecules inside the Erlenmeyer flask. They're moving quickly. They have a lot of kinetic energy. On the outside are the atmosphere molecules. Now, at this moment in time, the atmosphere molecules, although they're moving sl more slowly, there are a lot more of them pressing down on the surface of the water. And for a brief moment, these two forces are balanced. The pressure applied by the atmosphere molecules is the same as the pressure applied by the gas molecules on the inside of the flask. But now, the inside of the flask starts to cool. That means these molecules have less kinetic energy. They're moving less quickly as they cool down. So as they collide with the surface of the water inside, they do so with less force. They're not moving as fast. So now the two pressures are no longer the same. There's less pressure inside because of the less energetic gas collisions with the surface of the water. The atmospheric pressure is still the same. So the water inside the flask rises, not because it's sucked up by the lack of pressure inside, but it's pushed up. The atmospheric pressure outside, the molecules colliding with the surface of the water in the dish, pushes up the water on the inside, overcoming the force of gravity and causing the water to flow up. You can decide whether that counts as anti-gravity or not. But as always, when it comes to gas properties, picturing the molecules is key to understanding what's happening. Until next time.